Mickey, thank you so much for joining me today on this stifling hot day. Oh, it's really tremendous. <laughs> so you are a TV director on some of the biggest soaps in the UK, yeah. Emmerdale currently, Coronation Street, EastEnders. But for you, it started out differently. You were an actor initially. I was, yeah. I, I think that came from, from when I was younger and I used to watch television and I knew I wanted to be an actor, but I thought they were the only jobs that were here. <laughs> so once I started actually working in telly and I started to get more drawn to the other side of it, really. So, yeah, I did initially start off as an actor. What was it that made you want to change direction? Because um, you, you worked on television as an actor, didn't you? Well, I started quite young. I went to the Everman Youth Theatre and there was a woman in Youth Theatre who went on to work for BBC Radio 4 called Kate Rowland and she was very like encouraging towards me. I just started to get little bits of work and stuff and that's the sort of direction I was going in. When I became a regular on a show, I was sort of more drawn to the other side of it. I've always sort of been like a crew type person. Yeah. I always found myself more with the crew and I like the, the sort of process of it all coming together really. From your transition from acting to directing, how did you go about um, sort of getting your opportunities, establishing yourself? What would you your method? Well, you've got to be a bit cheeky, Drew, to be honest. You have got to be a little bit hard-faced. What, what I did, when I was in Brookside, um, we only worked, obviously, Monday to Friday, so I had the weekends free, and we had all this equipment, which no one used all weekend. So we started to make sure films ourselves. So we'd use the Brookside houses or the Brookside shops. And I'd direct, because obviously that's where I wanted to go. And my friend who was in the cast, Vicky Gates, she used to write. And, um, and so we'd do short films and we'd use like the boomer would step up and be a boom mic a, a, a sound mixer or someone who waited in the office would do makeup or someone who was the second day AD would step up and be a first AD Amazing. so it was like a, a like a like a natural progression for everyone so that's how I started so I had some pretty good um, short films which was not down to me it was down to the expertise of the people around me and the equipment we had so I started to just sort of take that round and, and you know hand it out to people and I had a job on Family Affairs which is a soap which also got axed one in my life um, so I was on Family Affairs for a bit and there was a producer there and I gave him my show reel and I said it was that long ago it was on video and I said can you, can you have a look at that and if there's um, you know any chance to let me be a director I'd love it and she basically said no, um, she enjoyed it, but the show was too difficult for new time directors to do. So I sort of pestered her a bit, and every time I seen her in the canteen, I'd go, just let me do one app, one app. If it's rubbish, it won't make any difference. One app, one app. <laughs> and then by some fluke, she went, come and see me. So that's how I started off, really. Wow. Okay, so, brilliant. That's fantastic, and it just progressed from so there. You've got to be a little bit cheeky with people, yeah. otherwise, you know. Fantastic. Fast forward into yourself now as a, as a, as a director, you're working on said, some of the big UK soaps. What are the roles and responsibilities you have as a director? You're not just directing the, the, this, each episode, you, obviously there's a lot more work that goes into that. What type of, what's your sort of... Uh, I think your first responsibility to, to the um, to like soaps, so like continuing dramas, obviously you want to tell the story because people are gripped by the story. So you want to make sure you're hitting all the story points script-wise. So, for me, that's your priority, to make sure you've got like a good handle on what's going on in your episodes, because we usually direct four episodes, and then someone else will direct the next four, and it's also like a bit of a cycle. So you obviously want to tell the story correctly. You obviously want to know actors' journeys before they've come to you. So it's good to get a handle on all that. But also, you've got to sort of go in knowing that, because they're so fast, you've got to go in, you've got to say, you're doing this to that camera person, you're doing that, you're doing that. You've got a camera script here, everyone's got to know what they're doing because it is really quick in the studio. And um, and then you've got to do all your design meetings. So it's sort of like, like being like um, the teacher with a class, and they are naughty, with a class of <laughs> naughty kids, really. <laughs> You've got to keep them in line. You've got to keep everyone keep in line. line. But I've got to say, everyone works so hard and people are usually, you know, up for anything really. From the other side of the coin, as, as an actor, um, I find it very important, things like attending workshops. That's a big thing. You know, I attended a workshop of you, that you ran yourself with Face Diring, casting director of Emmerdale, um, a few months ago, and I find it... I get a lot from them, or I try and get as much as I can, and I found that so useful, and I know you're very big on giving back to, to the acting community and, and, and 
how important is it to you to give back your knowledge and what you've learned to people who are trying to make their way into the industry? For me, because I've sat in, in your position, because obviously I was, I was a job and actor for a while, going to London, doing auditions, and I don't feel like anyone ever takes the time to be um, that pleasant to you. You sort of go all the way to London, you do an audition, and then you never hear anything back from them. I think it's good that you get an insight how people work, so it's not just bad manners, it's just those of people are so inundated sometimes. So it's good to, to connect with people on a bit more of a personal level, yeah. rather than just be faces coming in to a, a sort of not such a nice environment. Auditions, they can be a bit horrendous and a bit grueling. Hopefully when people come to see me or Faye, they're a bit lighter and a bit more friendly. Because yeah. I haven't been in so much of being horrendous. I, I would never want to do that to people. Also for me, I like to stay connected with actors. When you're seeing people do scenes at workshops, it's sort of less, less pressured than if they were in yeah. an audition. So I like to see people in workshops because you're seeing the real them yeah. to a point. So that's why that works for me. Also, I feel like it's good if you're in a position and you've got some knowledge and you want to share it and, and you think people will get something from it, I think it's good to give back. I think myself, I learn from people all the time. You know, everyone, even I've been working with a young lad called Danny at Inspire, who's just like a newish, a newish person to the industry. And his enthusiasm and the things he was talking about, just they just give me something, yeah. you know. So, so I like to meet all sorts of people. It was said, it was for me, it was, it was so, it was so useful for me. So, thank you for that, anyway. I'll thank you before, but it really was. Sorry to cut over. I think a lot of people go, Oh my god, a director, oh my god, a casting director. For me, I'm just lucky to have a job at the minute, so I'd never think I was better than anyone or just my looks good at the minute and I do work hard and hopefully it continues to be good but I wouldn't want anyone to ever like put me on a pedestal or put casting directors on a pedestal because yeah. we've just got a job yeah. we're just the same as everyone else I think if you remove that mystique and that sort of fear and remember you know we're just normal people yeah, and as I always say when actors come for auditions someone that day is going to get that job so it could be you so if you think my god there's five of us here I'm in with a shot, rather than going, oh my God, I'm not going to get it. She's done more than me, he's done more than me, he was in that. You've just got to go, well, someone's going to get the job today and it's going to be me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you get asked this question dozens of times, but for actors who are the ones who, like, it's, again, you talk about this in your workshops, etc., but. Um, for actors who are serious about creating new opportunities, what would you say are the, the main key things that an actor um, A needs and needs to do proactively to get themselves and create opportunities to get into whatever, whatever the television, soap, drama, movies, theatre, whatever that may be? Right, I think you've got to stay what's sort of accessible to you. And I think in Manchester, especially, more so than Liverpool, and I say that as a scouser. Um, there's such a brilliant community theatre, fringe theatre scene, where I think all the actors, same with the workshops, are all really supportive of each other. So I think there's so much going on that, for me, if I was starting out, and as I did do, I'd get involved in fringe theatre, I'd invite agents if I was looking for an agent, because there's a lot in Manchester. I'd, likewise, I know cast and directors do go, like, for example, JB Shorts. That's got such a good reputation. A lot of people in the industry do go to watch the stuff there. So I'd sort of go down that route if I, if I was starting again. I mean, I think television will come later or you don't know who's going to be in that audience watching you. You know, I think if your, your headspace is, I just want to be on telly, then to me, you're not an actor. I think you need to sort of perfect the craft. I think if you can cope with being on stage and things going wrong, you can do anything. Yeah. You know, telly will come. You know, I don't I think if that's your only aim, it's it's not good. It's like the workshops which you go to yourself. It's good for you to meet like minded people and the support and the love each other has, you know, for one another is just it's off the scale really. I've never seen the likes of it. When I was a younger actor there was nothing like this. There was the actors centre which started off obviously in London, came to Manchester. It was so highbrow. 
and I don't think it was really aimed for working class actors. Yeah. You know, I'm going back like 20 years or whatever. But now I think it's so it's there for everyone to do. And I think if you've got that opportunity and you can afford to do it, I'd grip it with both hands, really. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And she said, and that, that feeling, I, I feel um, places like Inspire, going to classes and, and the workshop, it does it. You are meeting those people. And there is this a real big thing at the moment. People have a big circle of support. People are pushing each other. Want, people want each other to do well. There's room for everybody if everyone just, you know, it's, everyone works hard, they'll, you know. And enjoys himself and, and just does it with a smile on the face as well. I feel. Um, do you have any um, advice you would give to any people who wish to be on your side of the camera as directors? Um, Don't bother. Don't bother. <laughs> There's enough of us. <laughs> I'd say, obviously, I didn't go the traditional route to becoming a director. Most people go to film school or work the way up as a runner, second AD, first AD, director. I came from acting, so, so I arrived at it with very little technical knowledge. I just knew what I thought looked good, what I wanted to do. But having said that, I was really good with other actors. So, so what I didn't have, in, what I lacked in one area, I made up for in other areas. Because there's some directors who are not really that good with actors. So I think, I, I think now as I've gone on, I've found a bit of a balance with it all. But I'd say you either go that route, runner, third, second, first, yeah. go to film school, or just be a bit cheeky, <laughs> like me. Um, but there's, there's, the BBC sometimes do a good training course, um, and places like ICV are very, are very pro encouraging the staff to move on. So there's a, an awful lot of, of people at ICV who are... Uh, in the props department or in the camera department who have actually started to train up as directors. So organisations like that are good to get in and work your way up. It's obviously not, they're not going to give a direction job to someone who's 22 because you've got to have some sort of experience, some sort of life experience because, because you are running that crew and people are going to be wanting answers to things and when actors are doing scenes, it's good if you've got an emotional idea of what they're going through. So it's not a job for a kid. Um, it's so, I mean, I'm not saying they wouldn't be able to do it, but I think emotionally would they be trusted by companies to do it. So there's, there's, there's ways around it, I'm sure. Obviously, young people direct films and stuff. I'm, I'm talking about like soaps and yeah. that, you know. So you do a lot of work with television at the moment and soaps. Do you have any wish to do any more films, short films, feature films? Is there any? Um, any I'm actually uh, doing one at the minute, right, okay. uh, an LGBT one with, with some people, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's got like an old Brookside co-star in it, which ah, is good. Um, and uh, no, I would like to obviously move in a different direction, but I just seem to get booked up with work, which is a great thing. You know, also you sort of think, oh my God, well that's taking me out of you know, out of the running for anything else because I'm so booked up, which I'm not complaining about. But, you know, I think I've just got to sort of get my head around what I actually want to do. At the minute, I, I love working on the soaps and getting to work with loads of actors. I can hopefully create work for other actors, you know, if opportunities come up to cast people in it because a lot of opportunities do come up in the soaps. What I love about them is the sort of the first port of call for people now. It's where most people will get the first telly job and obviously because there's such little work in the industry as the industry has got smaller reality tv's got bigger you get big names you get really accomplished good actors wanting to be involved in it so you know it's it's win-win yeah, yeah it is yeah win -win. That's fantastic. fantastic is there any chance um we would ever see mickey jones dipping his toe back into acting again no. i like to think when i'm 70. <laughs> I'm working in the cabin with Risa. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> she'll still be in the cabin, obviously. 100%, 100%, you know. Really. So yeah. So I, I, I mean, never say never. I, I, sometimes I watch things, or if I'm at a workshop, or maybe I'm watching a good bit of telly, and sometimes I see an actor. One who always used to get me was Val from Emmerdale, and I used to watch, and I think, oh my god, I'd love to be in a scene with her. So I think as an actor, I don't think it ever leaves you. I think if it's something you've done and something you know, oh my god, I love that. I love that. It sort of just give you the buzz. Or like if you go to see a play, you go, oh, I miss being on stage. Or, you know. So never say never, Drew. Never say never. Oh, that's 
that's cool, that's cool. Well, you're having an amazing time at the moment anyway, and that's that's the most important thing. But yeah, Mickey, um, thank you so much for speaking to me today and, and uh, joining me for a drink in this stifling hot day. It does look like Cheers. I'm drinking a uh, alcoholic drink, but it's actually a nice latte, so... Uh, Whatever, thank you. I can <laughs> smell it, you know, I can smell it. Um, well, thank you so much anyway. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me too. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.